Hi and welcome back to Robotics 101. In this video, we are going to do a very interesting problem of inverse kinematics. So I have a robot here, which is displaced from the fixed frame four units in X and two units in Y. It has a link right here, which has a dimension of three units and there's a motor attached right here. So this link can rotate and the rotation angle is represented by theta one. Now this is my second link. Again, this link can rotate two, and the rotation angle is marked by theta two here. And this right here is a prismatic joint. So it means that this joint can, can extend or retract. So this length is variable. So I just call this, the length of this link as a two. Now I have another link here, which is fixed. It is fixed at an angle of 40 degrees and has a dimension of four units and the end effector is again fixed at a treated angle of 30 degrees. So this is my end effectors frame right here. So now coming to the question. So the question is for the robots end effector to be at M, which has this X, this Y and this orientation where the coordinates given are x, y and theta relative to the fixed reference frame determine the required robot parameters to achieve it. So this is what my end effector, my end effectors moving frame should be. So in short, my end effectors frame should be at the, at the required position. So this represents my x coordinate of the end effectors frame. This coordinate represents my y coordinate of the end effectors frame and this angle 160 degrees represent the represents the orientation of the end effector. Let me mark it as theta. So I what I can do is I can write this in this form. So I, I am given this and I know that this can be written in a homogeneous form in this manner, which just has a rotation matrix here with the angle is 160 degrees and this is my X and this is my Y. Now the way to do this problem is since it is an inverse kinematics problem. So what you do is you first do the forward kinematics of it. So the way you can do this is simply by first considering all the homogeneous transforms that takes the robots end effector from the fixed frame. So it, it takes the fixed frame to the robots end effector frame. So going from here to here, I can say that there is a homogeneous transform, which takes the fixed frame to this point. I call it H naught. Then there is another homogeneous transform that just rotates the frame here. So I call this homogeneous transform H one, which has no displacement, only rotation. Then there's a homogeneous transform that takes this H1 to this point. So I call this H2. Now there is another homogeneous transform that takes this to this point. So I call that as H3. And finally, there's another homogeneous transform that takes this to this point. So I call this H4. So you notice that in order to get this H, which is the final end effectors position and orientation, I go from H naught to H1 to H2 to H3 to H4. So I can write the forward kinematics in this manner. So forward kinematics is just the multiplication of H naught through H4, which is going to give me the H, which is this one right here. I've written down what each of the homogeneous transforms are. So this H naught is just a simple transition with no rotation. So I have put the rotation angle as zero. So I get an identity matrix right here, one, zero, zero, one. Here, the rotation angle is theta one and there is no displacement. In H2, there is a displacement of three units and X, zero and Y with the rotation angle of theta two. In H3, there is a fixed rotation of 40 degrees, which is this one. And the displacement is L2, which is not constant, which can change. And the H4 has a fixed displacement and a fixed rotation. 
So what I notice right here is that what I need to find out is I need to find out the robot parameters. So right. So what the robot parameters in this case are my two thetas, which are if I just write it down, which are theta one, theta two, and the third robot parameter is the length of this prismatic joint, this thing, which is L2. So these are the three things that I need to find out theta one, theta two, and L2. And if I have a look at this homogeneous forward kinematics, I notice that these terms theta one, theta two, and L2 appear in these three homogeneous transforms, right? H1, H2, and H3. So in order to simplify the problem, what we can do is we can take everything which is everything is on the left side to the right side. What I mean by this is that so what we have done is we have taken H0 and H4 to the right side. So I get this equation right here. Now, what I've done is I have input this H0, H and H4 inverse into MATLAB and I've gotten the solution as this. Now I need to solve H1, H2 and H3. Now, if I multiply H1, H2 and H3, I got, I get this matrix right here on the left. And this matrix is this one and H1, H2 and H3 gives me this one. Now I know that both of these matrices are equal. Uh, so what I can do is I can compare the terms uh, across the two matrices. So if I start by comparing the terms, I can see that this has a sine and cosine. So what I will do is I will compare this sine and cosine with this term. So what I do right now is I compare the terms and I divide this term the sine term by the cosine term and similarly I divide this by this so I end up with this equation 10 of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus 40 equals to all of this and if I just do a data manipulation I take the 10 inverse so I end up with this, this equation which is equation 1 theta 1 plus theta 2 equals to minus 210 now similarly if I compare this equation right here with this and if I compare this with this I get equation 2 and equation 3 so now I have three equations with three unknowns I have three equations with three unknowns and I know that what I need to find out is I need to find out theta 1 theta 2 and L2 so from this what I do is from equation 2 and 3 I keep cos theta and sine theta on one side and take everything else to the other side and in doing so I realize that this is just theta 1 plus theta 2 and I already know the value of theta 1 plus theta 2 as 210 degrees so I input this 210 degrees into this so I get these two equations so now uh, the way to go about it is I take these two equations, I square them up and I add them up. I square them up and I add them up. And since I'm squaring, I end up with an equation which has A squared terms. Since there is an A squared term, so I get two different values of A2. So the first value that I get is minus 8.74. And the second value that I get is minus 4.5. So what this means is it represents two different solutions of the link length A2. Now the way to proceed is that I take this equation right here equation 4 and equation 5 and I divide the two to end up with this equation. Now I know that I know everything in this equation except theta 1. So I take 10 inverse to the I take 10 inverse and I find out the, the values of theta 1. Obviously I I have to input this A2. So first what I do is I input A2A into this and I get theta 1A. And then I input A2B into this and I get theta 1B. So similarly I get two different values of theta 1. So what this means is that this theta 1, the first one corresponds to this theta, uh, this A2 value. And this theta 
1B corresponds to this. So these two correspond to each other. So A2A corresponds to theta 1A and A2B corresponds to theta 1B. Now moving forward, now I already know A2A, I know A2B, I know theta 1A, I know theta 2B, theta 1B, sorry. So I just need to find out one more um, very one more robot parameter which is theta 2 so for that I use the very initial equation which is this one equation 1 which if you recall it is theta 1 plus theta 2 equals to minus 210 degrees so I, if I input theta 1a as 165 minus 165 I get with I get this solution for theta 2a and if I input theta 1b as minus 75 degrees I get this solution so all in all what I get is I get these two different solutions so this so this one represents my first solution and this one represents my second solution and both of these are going to satisfy my condition so both of these with these uh, robot parameters are going to place the end factor at my required orientation and at the required position as well so let me show you what I mean so I have drawn out the robot's position at the at the first solution right here and we can see that th this is the uh, pivot of the robot this is the first thing this is the second thing this is the third thing and this is the end effectors position and you can see that we have reached the desired position with this first solution and similarly if I draw out the second solution I have drawn it out in pink and you can see this so the first theta 1 is minus 75 degrees which is this then it goes and it is minus 135 degrees which is this and the a to b length is minus 4.5 so it starts from here and goes up to here and we get we end up at the same point hope you found this video useful if you did don't forget to subscribe to the channel Put a thumbs up on this video and as always see you in the next video.